Hey guys, it's Jeff from San Diego Seed Company. We are not in our garden or Bridget's garden today, but we're at our friend's house out in Santee, and they just got into this place and were lucky enough to be here for the inauguration of their new beds. So we decided to do a series of videos today about how to plan out your new garden bed. Today we're gonna be talking about above ground raised beds. We're gonna talk everything from spacing to wood choice to what to fill them with, everything that you're gonna to need to know to take a grass backyard or a mulch backyard to a healthy, thriving, organic garden. So stay tuned. Before we get into everything today, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you're alerted anytime we put out new content. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're here with Florence and Ray. They're the homeowners. They've been huge viewers of the channel, which we love. They consume a lot of gardening content online, yes. right? Yes. A lot. Learn, Lots. learn everything <laughs> from YouTube. Um, so why did you guys want to make a garden. It kind of give me the a quick background of your experience gardening and why you wanted to put one back here. Sure. Yes, yeah, so initially we started um, Florence had actually said she really wanted to like tomatoes. And I, I had told her that I'd grown tomatoes as I was younger and they taste way better than grocery or store-bought tomatoes. And I said, why don't we grow a tomato? And she started growing one tomato plant. I took everything obsessively and grew many more. And so it just kind of expanded from that. We were during the pandemic and we had some space to do it. So we started out in fabric pots in a very small location on the south side of our apartment complex. And uh, the passion grew and we started wanting to get a house and a bigger property. I think that is kind of the, the template for most gardeners, that they start in a pot on their balcony, right. move to fabric, now we're at the raised beds. It's so fun to have you guys in the community. And for you viewers out there, we want to find out more about San Diego gardeners. So if you have a garden or you don't have a garden and want to transform it, drop a comment and we would love to contact you guys and uh, make more content like this because it's so helpful. Yeah, and fun. It is fun, and I love tomatoes now. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, today we're gonna talk about the seven, that's not seven, seven things that you need to know if you're gonna turn your yard into a raised garden bed. And the first thing is prepping the area. As you can see, we've got mulch down. But if we were to take back some of this mulch, let's see if I can find it. Ray and Florence have done a very smart thing from the very beginning, and they covered their existing lawn with cardboard. Now, it's a perfect time to do that because they just moved in, so they've got a ton of moving boxes. They took them apart, laid cardboard. Now, why do you do that? It's basically one reason, and one reason only, and that is a weed barrier. What you're not gonna wanna do is have to spend a ton of time weeding your walkways when you wanna focus all your energy on growing plants and dealing with the garden bed. We're just putting the cardboard down to keep the weeds down. And then the mulch on top is just to keep the cardboard in place and it's more of an aesthetic, fun garden space that you can walk with. If you wanted to use rock, you could. If you wanted to, I don't know, you could get really creative for your walkways. You can do whatever you want. DG is also popular. It all depends on your budget and your preference when it comes to looks. All right, out from behind the camera, it's John. Nice to see everybody. And so next thing, number two, two, what we're gonna talk about is wood choice. What do you wanna build your raised beds out of? There's pros and cons to whatever materials you choose. So let's talk about it. First up, we have here pine. These are like one by 12 boards here. We've got, that was me measuring really quickly, roughly. <laughs> pine boards, just four, screwed together, nothing too crazy, simple construction, anyone can put this together. But there's some pros and cons here. So first thing, pro is this is probably one of your least expensive options. Some of the cons to that, which we're actually gonna turn into a pro here, is that this pine, as it is, is not going to last very long. We're giving this maybe two or three seasons, especially with uh, any rainy seasons, and depending on just how much of an abuse these boards take, they're gonna start to warp, they're gonna eventually rot out, and they really just aren't gonna last more than a few years. But that's okay, because they just moved in, they don't wanna be committed to a certain layout at this time. Their yard extends quite a bit and they're gonna to wanna to change things up and they already have that in mind. They know that, okay, these aren't gonna last. It's the cheapest option, so we're not going in too hard on a budget, but that this is something we can switch up in a couple years. Pine, 
A couple things you can do to make it last a little bit longer is you can add some kills, you can add some exterior paint. Of course, think about that might be leaching into the soil, into your plants, so maybe you're not fully 100% organic. You can also just do the outside, but the inside's what's coming into contact with the soil, all the moisture. You don't wanna do treated wood. That's going to last longer. It costs about 10, 20% more, but those chemicals are made to keep the wood uh, in ground, stay for a long time. That's not the sort of stuff you want going up through your plant's roots and into your food. Third option here is to buy something like cedar. Now that's going to be maybe three times as, the, as expensive as pine, but it's going to last a lot longer. If you have more of a permanent idea of what you want for those beds, where you want them to live, how you want them to be laid out, maybe consider investing in that for the long term. And then of course at the high end, you have metal raised beds, and that's going to last a lot longer. Pretty easy to move, structurally easy to put together to move once it's empty of course, um, and going to last a long time. But again, those are all considerations if you want to invest up front versus having the flexibility to maybe say, hey, in a few years, I might want to change up my garden a little bit. Okay, number three, let's talk size. Now size is a funny thing, because we were just thinking, if we were to make one huge, big raised bed, at what point does a raised bed become in ground just because it's so big? Because you'd have to like walk on it with stepping stones. Anyway, you didn't tune in for our meandering thoughts. So as you can see, these boxes are about four by eight feet. Four feet is as wide as you want to go, because anything wider than that, it's just too hard to reach into the middle of the bed. The other thing to consider is the longer that you go, the more likely that the boards can warp and break, and as they rot out, you're gonna have a failure point. So eight feet is a good length. I wouldn't go any longer than eight feet. So these boxes at four by eight are right on the money. Okay, so we've got another box coming in right there with uh, JT. Is it JT? JD. 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 I said D. Yeah, a different consonant. I, I said JT. Let's talk about one more thing with size, and that is what plants are you going to grow? If you want to become a radish gardener, you can grow smaller boxes and have easier access to your plants. But if you're growing something like an artichoke, or in the winter, the, some of the cruciferous crops like cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, those things are really big. So you wouldn't want to build a small bed because it's gonna take over the whole bed. That is one of the downsides of container gardening is that some crops are just big. If you just don't have the space in your backyard, we're gonna talk in a point later about thinking vertically, which will alleviate some of those issues. Number four, next we wanna talk about growing up using vertical space and maximizing the growing potential of a raised bed. So a couple things to think about. Are you going to put tea stakes maybe in each end and have a pipe going across where you can bring string down from if you're doing a low and lean method? Uh, also consider, am I gonna put up any kind of fence panel or cattle panel? Now if you're using something like chicken wire, you can cut that to size, you can go whatever size you need to. If you're using something like a uh, cattle panel, we love getting our cattle panels. You've seen our arches before probably. Those are about four feet by 16 feet. So if this, if this right here was any less than four feet, we wouldn't be able to make an arch here, for example. If it's more, you can fit that in nicely. Or we could go this side and have cattle panel chicken wire going this way to create a green wall because this is the furthest north and so we aren't going to shade any other crops. We want our lower crops in front and our taller crops, our peas, our tomatoes, our cucumbers growing up here to create a bit of a wall, nice little privacy, but also that keeps the sun accessible for the plants in front. So really want to consider when you're planning out your raised beds, how can I grow up and maximize the space and make sure that I'm really utilizing this space in the best way possible. Okay, number five, this is one thing that we personally overlooked in our garden, and that's why we're putting it in the video now, because we learned from our mistakes, and that is staking. You can't simply, well you can, but you, you'll have a failure point, uh, simply just put your box where it goes and then just expect it to stay there. With the rain and the erosion of the mulch as people are walking, these beds are gonna shift. So that's one reason to stake. The other reason is since we're, are, we only have one by 12s here that span eight feet, 
when we fill this with compost and topsoil, this thing is gonna start to bow out as that hydraulic pressure forms in the bed. So one way to keep that from happening is just take a little stake right here and you're gonna drive it down all the way down below the level of the soil. Just so you don't see the stake, it's kind of ugly. That's my preference. Some people might not care. And then actually run a couple screws in there. So not only will that keep this bed where you want it to be, but it's also gonna prevent this board from warping quite so much. Okay, next point, and this is very important because once you get these beds built, if you don't have the right spacing, you're really gonna be kicking yourself. The main thing I want you guys to remember is you wanna have an, not enough space to walk with your body, but enough space to put whatever wheelbarrow or cart that you have in between the rows. If you can't get your wheelbarrow through the pathway and you have to park it over there and take it by shovel, you're really gonna be mad at your past self. So when you talk about spacing, just make sure that you can get that wheelbarrow through. The other thing to think about, this isn't really spacing, it's more placement, but where is your water bib? If you have an option to put it further or closer to the water bib, it sounds obvious, but sometimes you don't think of it. Make sure you have access to water, or at least a long enough hose to be able to get to your furthest bed. And our final point to bring things home, we're actually going back to the bottom and talking about a little bit of pest prevention. So here, we talked about it in the beginning. We have the native soil, then we have some cardboard, a layer of cardboard, or a couple layers, and then mulch on top. Now, what you can do if you, especially know if you live in an area that you have a lot of gophers or voles, anything burrowing, is you can add a screen. There are some of those pests in here, um, and they are taking some uh, measures, let's just say, to take care of that. But uh, they didn't want to put down a screen for a couple of reasons. One is these beds are going to move. They don't know exactly where they want them. Digging up all that screen and moving it around is going to be troublesome, or they could have done this whole area. That's cost-wise, just doesn't make sense. Wasn't feasible at this time, really was a little bit too much for what they wanted for this space at this time. And then also, that would eliminate pests coming from below, burrowing pests, but especially if you live in our area, um, skunks, opossums, rats, um, other parts of the country, deer, uh, all of those other pests are still able to get in, no problem. So you're only uh, eliminating part of your pest issues. So depending on where you live, think about some people do need to fence in their gardens, uh, especially if you live in a deer heavy area. But for most of zone nine and 10, we're not dealing with that. Um, but something to consider, depending on where you are, think about the long-term strategy of what makes sense for what you're looking for. If you do decide to screen, consider very carefully the material. Make sure it's galvanized and isn't going to just rust out and be gone in a couple years anyways. That's just a total sunk cost. Also, consider the size. Um, you don't wanna just lay down some chicken wire with big four or six inch squares. That's not doing anything. You wanna get really tight mesh that the animals won't be able to get through, won't be able to get around. So it is a bit of a process, but uh, something to consider. We usually don't recommend opting for that unless if you're really committed to a space. But in this case, it didn't make sense, but it might be something that you need to think about. Okay, so that was the seven things you guys need to think about when you're putting in raised beds in your garden. It's starting to rain here, which in, oh, in San Diego, it's such a glorious time. Free water. Uh, we need to start setting out buckets and collecting this stuff. But we want to hear from you guys. For those of you who have built raised beds, added them to your yard, what did you learn? What mistakes did you make? Are there things that we didn't cover in this video that you think would be helpful? Remember, we're a community. We're all learning from each other. So drop those in the comments and keep watching. Speaking of keep watching, keep watching this series because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to fill these beds and how to irrigate them. So stay tuned.